removing the alternator. Uh, just running a bit into a bit of trouble. She's not doing a charge. She's doing part charge. So um, taking her out. Going to have a look at her. Probably replace. I'm going to disconnect the battery. That's the negative. You want to undo the 12 mil, 12 mil bolt on top. The 10 mil bolt that goes to the power cord. There's a plug on the back that I'll get to in a minute. And there's a 14 mil bolt on the bottom that uh, I'll do from the bottom as well. Okay, so I'm um, looking at upgrading my alternator to a Bosch alternator. And you can see the difference in sizes. And what I'm facing here is mounting them. And um, I'm told that this alternator here, the original Tarago Previa alternator, um, does about 70 amps. This Bosch one has it written on it. The other one doesn't. Has 108 amps. So, definitely a better alternator. Now, I've already put the fan belt up to it. They're the same. This is off the Trigo. And you can see the belt has the same. We'll get the camera on the right angle for you. Anyway, that's the same. I've already looked at it. And um, they're the same uh, pulley on both of them. So. That part there is not a drama. It's making sure that when this goes on, it is in line with the rest of the pulleys on the van. So, putting it like this, you can't get any better flush than that to say lining up. You know, this is the problem I've got. The top bolt for tensioning. This is where I'm going to have my biggest problem. I'm going to need a spacer that goes from goes between there. And um, so that shouldn't be too much of a drama because that's just for tightening. The bottom that keeps it in line and um, keeps it straight is the bigger problem, and that's an easy fix. And you can see the this will fit inside the there's a like a like a shape like that type of. Um, bracket that this slips into. Now, obviously, this is not going to slip into it, the other alternator, but it's only you put them like this, the back bolt and the front bolt. Um, oh, just, there's nothing to be done there, it's just that little lip there, you can see that there, that little lip there, I might shave off. That's the only height difference between these two here. So that will keep the alignment of the pulleys in line for when I'm adjusting the belt back. This part here, you can see where I've marked, because I can't be on the inside of that mount, I'm going to go to the outside of the mount. So I need to shave that much off this section here. And that's pretty much it there. That should be easy enough fixed. I've got the um, I've got the wiring connectors for this point here, and you can see there's just S and L. That's for um, signal and exciter. And this one here, you've got um, I can't remember which way this is right now, but I'll work it out. The two side ones, one's S, the other one's L, it could be the other way around. And the top one is for ignition. Well, this alternator here doesn't have an ignition wire, so it's got a self exciter. It must, when the alternator starts spinning, it generates its own power to kick in. So that's going to be all that I need to do for that. And this one here, um, yeah, I'll, it, it's a bigger, stronger. The core is. The core inside there, you can see we're looking at about two, two and a half mil core wiring, and the old one we're looking at about uh, 
probably one and a half mil core wiring and it's a smaller core this is a bigger core this is a stronger alternator made by Bosch so you know that you can trust it it's a very good brand uh, the next one is another thing to look at they look close enough that shouldn't be a problem the bolt distance from the two at the bottom and the two at the top they look pretty close to where they should be so I shouldn't have too much dramas with that there when looking at it from the other angle the Bosch one is an old, uh, is a Magna um, alternator by the way um, I think um, the same alternator is used in multiple cars though um, it's a it's a clockwise turning engine, clockwise turning alternator um, the what I mean here is when you adjust it you're going to adjust it so far say the bottom was already oh that's the bottom there, say the bottom was already bolted into the car the top swings to tension it, to tighten that belt so this one here when it's in the belt might be a little bit too small but the bracket on the van itself um, had probably about that much space that I could have gone back onto so this might go on and with very little adjusting the belt's going to be as tight as it can be so I might need to get a slight a next size up belt to fit this alternator in but everything looks pretty simple the biggest part is trimming trimming this part of the alternator down and just smoothing it, smoothing that part there off and uh, she should go straight on okay you can see what I've done here so I've smoothed off the top there now it's perfectly in line with the old alternator I've trimmed the bottom part down and um, as long as the back part is flush there when I'm bolting it on and it bolts from the outside so the top that part's going to pull towards and the back part will be flush so that's going to give me my my um, squareness with when the belt goes back on that part's perfect so I'll um, I'm going to make a spacer to go between here it's not needed but I'm going to make it anyway just because I this part here um, the original bolt <coughs> fits in there perfectly and it's nice and snug so I don't want this original one from the Magna to come out any further than that um, I've knocked it down that far but I don't want it to move any further than that so if I put a a spacer between here and that will keep that part of the I don't know what you call that it's like a size um, like make the whole size smaller type fitting I don't really know what you call that piece um, but we want that to stay there so that's um, a good thing this should go on now and I'm going to test that in a second once I stop recording this and then I just need to find a spacer for the top one that's of about that size there and the bolt long enough to fit through the original mount to there and I should be good to go, I just need to do the wiring now you can see there the alternator is fitting you see uh, that part that I've shaved there that will bolt back and pull the back part flush the problem I'm having is um, the top part come out here. The problem I'm having right now is this top part is I can get in there with the camera as well. See that the, the bolt comes on this risen part here. See that's risen there. That's not letting it get past the mount. So I'm gonna have a look under the van now and see if there is a way to adjust that top mount 
uh, from the other side, if I can loosen off the bolt, maybe I can adjust it so it's a bit loose, get the alternator into position and tighten them back up. Okay, so it doesn't look like there's an adjuster on here from the back. Um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this mount off and um, we'll undo that top bolt there because the bottom one you can see there's no adjust adjustment on that. So I'll just loosen them off, I'll take the top bolt out get the alternator into the position I want it and see if she'll tighten them back up if not I might have to um, just cut a slit on this side on the left side of that bolt so I can make that um, top arm adjustable okay I'm just about to finish up here for today because it's starting to get dark and uh, I have an ant problem around here that is um, more a centimeter and a half uh, ants start coming out and can't lay underneath a car and get eaten by ants, it's rather annoying. But what I need to do is um, I need to trim this, and you can see where the the, ra the alternator used to mount onto in the distance there, and that's exactly the amount I need to trim back for the new alternator to fit in. I was going to cut these, uh, just the slot, say, there and there to make an adjuster but then as it turns that way as tightening it's possible to push past that adjuster as I tighten up the alternator so that was um, kind of like a, a no go zone there I might might be able to make the hole a little bit uh, and, I, and I will I'll, I'll make the hole just a little bit more closer to the edge <clears throat> say about 3 mil closer that much closer so um, when you do adjust it um, it gives me that extra bit of movement to mount the alternator, but it's not going to go too far away when I tighten it up with the butterfly clip that um, it's not going to push past the bracket altogether and cause problems later on. I'm going to use this spring as the spacer. It only needs to keep that um, part that's already in the alternator I showed you before in place. The bolt fits perfectly through that and I can trim that to the size I need when I need it so that's gonna work out good there and I should have all this back together tomorrow so uh, for tonight I'm just gonna finish it up here and uh, yeah continue tomorrow <clears throat> so I've already drawn that bit, bit down there flattened it up be a um, fair big help actually get a file to that and um, drill that hole out tomorrow. And I already said that I'll call it quits tonight, but you know, as it is, you always try and squeeze in the last few minutes. Uh, so, once I've got this hole here drilled, made that wider, um, that should fix my problem there. Just fold that down, I'll give it a clean up and a bit of paint so um prevent that bit there that I've sanded back from rusting and the next tackle is a longer bolt through here I might have to um forget this um, butterfly bolt there and um which I'd rather not I'd rather keep that but this part here is not long enough so I need to speak to somebody else uh, there's an engineer place down the road here. I'll have a chat with them, see if they got one something that I can put on here that makes it a little bit longer. But we're nearly there. It's only this that's my problem, and then I can put it all back together. Alright, so this is the original mount. This is what I've come up with. The, um, this is what the alternator the old alternator originally bolted to. Um, this part here would be in between there and you'd bolt it down and this is the tensioner. Now I can't use this original bolt because the new alternator or the, the alternator I'm going to be using sits probably about up here not flush with the top mount and that, that's not a problem with alignment. The alignment's okay because that's based on the bottom mount. Top mount is just tight tensioning for the belt. 
So I've got this longer bolt. I've welded um, a bit of metal on there, as you can see. I'll just go in that laying around. And um, that will help me when I get the other alternator on. That will stop it from turning the other, from the other side. And I can still use the tensioner to tension up. Now I need to put this back in before I go any further to find out exactly where the other alternator is sitting against this one here. And then I'm going to cut a spacer based on a guess measurement. Uh, better to go a little bit less than to have too much because I can always use a washer if I've cut too much off. So the next step is putting this mount back in. Uh, hang on, I'll just um, show you this as well. The bottom hole I drilled out because that's going to give me the most leverage. And uh, you can see like it's the original hole there. A little bit of play, but to the bottom hole, there's a lot of play there now. That's good. I've, got, I've given myself probably about two mil more on the bottom hole. That's going to allow the leverage. If you can try and get me here, what I'm saying, so leveraging like that. If it was a top bolt, I'd get bugger all from the play. The bottom one, I'd get more swing, and I only needed to go up probably two or three mil on the top to get that alternator to clear. I've also um, smoothed off this part here because there was like a little bump coming down right here. The alternator was having a problem getting past. So I've just leveled all that part there out as well. So all that in effect should help me get the alternator on with this mount. The main thing is finding out how much of a spacer I need to um, put there because obviously the alternator is going to be in the middle as well so you can imagine the width of the alternator I might not even need a space I might just use a bunch of washers I don't know yet we'll put it in, put it in the van and um, see where we're at and go from there okay we're getting closer I had the alternator in and uh, I came across the, the alternator I'm going to use uh, had a threaded hole here and uh, on the Tarago it requires that the bolt goes through on that butterfly bolt that I was talking about earlier so I've taken the alternator back here, I've drilled a hole uh, so now I'm going to put it back in and um, continue where I was before find out what type of, sp uh, what type of gap of sp spacer I will need and um, we'll go from there Okay, so I've got the belt I need that uh, fits to the size um, and that's um, the minimum I can go, so that works out really well there at the belt. But um, a different problem I have, which I have an answer for, is the belt is hitting that bolt at the bottom. You see that there? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a button bolt and I've trimmed, you can see there, I've trimmed a square bit at the end there. So when I push that in, it's not going to throw the alternator out by one or two mil. I want it to stay level still, but I'll be bolting it tight from the back of the alternator, not the front. So that's the bottom one we got sorted out. And um just for good measure, I might just even tap the top of the bit of the top off there. It should be fine for that. And then I'll work on the top and um, get it all tightened up. Okay, so just trim it down a fraction, on like maybe a mil, or at least a mil. Um, just for good measure, you know, you just want to put the bolt in and make sure it's right. Another thing I didn't mention is I'm putting a brass washer in o-ring if you wish um, because it's it's soft so when I tighten it down with the bolt I'm going to follow it up right with a, another bolt behind it to give it that extra tension and that should be perfectly fine for the bottom I'm going to give this a bit of paint just to prevent rusting it is galvanized but where I've grinded will rust so I'm going to um, just give that a bit of a 
paint just to cover that up and then we'll work on the top and um, finish off. Okay, so for the top mount, this is where I'm at. I've um, bent that um, bit of, I don't know, that wire metal part there. I've bent that up and hammered it flat a little bit so the butterfly clip can, uh, bolt can turn properly. Uh, reason being is because it, it's sticking at that little bit at the bottom was getting in the way of the alternator. And uh, I've kept the sliding tensioner part intact. I've used that set up there so it's still, it can still slide but there's no movement in it. And uh, because the bolt's coming out a fair way, the spacer is going to be resting against the washer or the end of the bolt there so it's going to have full support from the adjuster as well if I wanted to go to the extreme and if this doesn't work then I have to go to the extreme I could cut it straight down here get a bit of thick metal say 5 mil plate and weld it going that way and then weld this back onto that giving me a full support bracket um, I'm doing this because it's easier and if it works out then I'll leave it that way if it doesn't work out then I'll just have to bite the bullet so to speak and um, get the grinder out and make the bracket a different size uh, at the moment she's coming together quite well so I'll put her on and um, we'll get a look okay so she's all in she's tight everything's looking good Got the wiring plug there for L and S the top one is S according to Google Images and the one on the left the connection on the left is L and the connection on the right is IG and this alternator doesn't have IG so therefore I shouldn't need it so we'll go in the van now and we'll start her up and see if there's any charge happening now I don't have all the wiring connected yet it's just out of the way power fan so that's no drama there, it's not going to cause any trouble I'm just more interested to know right now that it works and then I can cable tie wires and cover wires or whatever but she's finished if it works right now then I'm finished, I just need to tidy up ok, so 11.8 and don't worry about the engine light flashing my OBD tool is connected and that's why that's flashing moment of truth Thirteen point nine, fourteen, let's turn everything on, eh? Lights, these lights with my big floodlights, air conditioner. Rear air conditioner. That's perfect. I've got everything on. Brilliant. I'm loving it. That's brilliant, they're straight off the battery. 14.8. That's brilliant. Well, like always, thanks for watching guys. This is the finish of this. I just need to um, clean everything up, put the wiring back together and um, we're done. So, um, things that I did um, muck up on. <coughs> I bent that mount here. I can't see it now, but that mount that I bent up before, I should have um, left it bent down because um, that socket that you can see there with the wire sticking in is supposed to um, actually slit onto that. And because it's bent up, it's between two pipes, and I can't get it to bend back without taking the bracket right out. 
so I just use a cable tie to hold it there instead, which arm um, will do. Uh, and the earth lead, I didn't screw that onto the mount before bolting the mount back in, and um, so I had to squeeze my hand in there and put that back on with, with a screwdriver. Um, other than that, I think I've covered everything. It's working good, I'm not shaking. The noise that I had earlier, I thought was um, a clutch fan, uh, the clutch for the air conditioning. And um, it wasn't the noise all the time was coming from my other alternator. So that's gone, which is nice and quiet now. All right, till next time, cheers. They don't really kill you, I mean. They just put you in cocoon oh. and icky goo.